Okay, I would like to give you an overview, a brief overview about the RECOCA project. RECOCA stays for Reduction of Baltic Sea Nutrient Inputs and Cost Allocations Within the Baltic Sea Catchment. In a nutshell, we can, uh, RECOCA deals with uh, that it should enable decision makers to produce well-grounded recommendations on how to achieve cost-effective nutrient reduction programs at regional and Baltic-wide scales. And since this is here a stakeholder workshop, we can say in RECOCA we have produced three tools. The first tool is a catchment database holding all major statistics on drivers of eutrophication, like agriculture, point sources, and so on. The second tool is that we developed catchment models allowing decision makers online to make scenario analysis on abatement strategies or to see what will happen if some countries follow the common agriculture policy, which are sometimes contradictory to, 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 to other directives. And the third one is that we produce cost optimization models. And I would like to briefly introduce to all three, three of these. But a little bit um, to the background. As all of you know is that the eutrophication section, section of the Baltic Sea Action Plan is a milestone for environmental governance, not only for the Baltic Sea region, but also for marine environmental in general. And what we can say here, that here in the Baltic Sea region, science meets management, we are really in the forefront here. And we are much better off compared to other regional seas, like the North Sea, the Mediterranean, and, um, and uh, the Black Sea. And it even may be that the Baltic Sea Action Plan will be a blueprint for the Marine Strategy Directive. And I think we have to, we have to be proud of that, and we have to have that in mind. And uh, <coughs> HELCOM is now currently revising the necessary nutrient reduction and country allocation schemes, and this is highly political, we will discuss that later on, of, these ba of the Baltic Sea Action Plan, but HELCOM needs tools. And we try to, to provide HELCOM with these, with these tools. And, uh, I think before I go into and showing some results from, from these tools, I want to emphasize it's what RECOCA has done for the first time that a catchment model, so a natural scientific model, and an economic model are based on the same data. And this is really essential because this, not ha this has not been done before, that they're really the same database. So here is something on this database. And here you see here on the left hand panel the resolution here we have data on, on a 10 by 10 kilometer uh, uh, scale. Here you can get all data on crop types, animals, chickens, pigs, and hens, everything you find there. You have uh, information about rural and urban populations, the degree of, um, of uh, sewage treatment, and so on. You find it for the first time also for the Baltic-wide scale. And uh, what we have done here as an example is in hotspots of nutrient leakage from agriculture. And this, I think, is for the first time that this has been done in this scale and this resolution and for the entire Baltic Sea. And you see here we are now in Poland that we have moderate leakage here, of course higher than the boreal parts in the north, but we have less, uh, of course, leakage than if we see the Denmark here, the very orange spot, or, or southern Sweden or Germany. And with these models, as you see that on the right-hand panel, we have done simulations. What will happen if, uh, for example, uh, Poland and the Baltic states will use the same fertilizer. They have the same fertilizer application as Germany, Denmark, or Sweden. And this is partly recommended by the, com uh, by the uh, common agricultural policy. So what we do here is, in a way, we, 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 we show you tools that you can model and simulate maybe contrasting scenarios. And what we see here that this might, may even uh, lead to a doubling of nitrogen fluxes to the Baltic Sea. So there's a big risk that the situation may be even worse. And, but what we do here is really we, we, we show you the way how to, 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 to achieve these goals or how, what could be the risks uh, to achieve these goals. The next um, kind of tools we created were new cost minimization models. And this is a regional model called the COCA and the Baltic White model called BaltCost, and this will be also available via the Nest system online within about two months, something like that. The model provides results to help identify the most cost-effective measures for reducing nutrient loads. And for a given set of sea basin-specific nitrogen phosphorus reduction targets, both models can specify to what extent each measure should be applied and in which locations in order to reduce the cost. For example, what you will do within, we are now in the finalizing phase, you can develop or you can choose a target for a sea basin, for example, the, the Gulf of uh, Finland. 
you will say we need 20,000 tons of reduction of nitrogen, 2,000 tons reduction of phosphorus. Then you can click to the participating countries. For example, you, you say it is only a deal between Finland and Estonia. It's not Russia it will be involved, but, or maybe it will be involved. Then you can choose the measures. And those measures we look for, less fertilizer use, uh, livestock changes, catch crops, wetland uh, formation, changes in transport, the NOI uh, deposition, and sewage treatment, of course. And you can uh, um, uh, choose various measures and players, so countries, and then you get a cost-optimal uh, uh, solution. Because the Baltic Sea Action Plan, as it is right now, is not the cheapest way, of course. So both models include abatement measures in agriculture, energy, and transport sectors, together with wetland restoration and improved wastewater treatment. Emissions to both air and water are thus included in the cost minimization models. And here, let me finalize with some key results. Some of them may be very easy and very simplistic, but I think they are important to, to mention. The nutrient fluxes to the Baltic Sea increase gradually as the man-made nutrient loading to the landscape increase. And it's synthetic fertilizer. This is the main driver for that. And in other areas, it's also animal feed and uh, import, for example, in Denmark, or atmospheric deposition is important, for example, in the boreal part in, from Sweden and, and Finland. But overall, the fertilizer use is the most important driver. And we have done various nutrient allocation analysis. And this shows, for example, if Sweden wants to fulfill the ongoing BSAP requirements, this means 20,000 tons less of nitrogen, this would mean a severe change in agriculture. This would mean something like between 20 and 60 percent less fertilizer and 20 to 60 percent less or less livestock, so example, in the order. It is really it is really substantial changes we need to do. This is we have to do. And this is really what Ricoca can do. We can show you models, and it is not our job to define the, what is a healthy Baltic Sea. We can contribute to that. But this is a political decision. We can show you the way how to achieve it. And this is what we have done with these tools. Dramatic increase in fertilizer use are likely to occur in transitional countries. And there's a high risk that nutrient loads to the Baltic Sea from Poland, the Baltic States, and Russia will increase because we will see changes in, 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 in lifestyle. The meat consumption in these countries uh, increases with several percentages per, per year. And this will have repercussions on, on, on the agriculture with more intensive uh, um, fertilizer use. And finally, cost of achieving a cost-effective fulfillment of the target set in the Baltic Sea Action Plan will undoubtedly be lower for the countries around the Baltic Sea than the costs which are incurred by these states under the present Baltic Sea Action Plan of emission reductions. So we estimate that with, with the cost optimization, these uh, could be cheaper by 500 million uh, euros per year about, something like that. Thank you. Thank you very much.